Hey guys, welcome to the Dead Horse podcast. This is Rashi and today with me are Vivek. Hey guys. And Arvind. Hello. So, what have you guys been playing? Uh mm-hmm. I've been playing Thief 3. I've basically been uh looking at it because I want to I want a good reference for lighting in in the stealth game. And oh, okay. uh Thief 4 I don't know, like Thief 4 is just erased from my memory for a lot of these. I'm not using it as a good reference for a stealth game at the moment. Thief 3 is excellent. Uh, Arvind, have you played it? Yeah, I've played it, yeah. Alright, like I mean, it, it like this thing that stands out for me is that it reminds me so much of Thief 4 and then at the same time, almost immediately, like I, I, I realize why I like this game but I don't like Thief 4. Like it has the same elements, like you know, that you can you have to, there's a city that's kind of like a hub area that you have to traverse through to get missions in. And if that's the same thing that you have in Thief 4. But in, in uh, like, somehow, in a very, very simple way in, in this, uh, in, in Thief 3, they managed to make that city feel familiar almost instantly. Because A, it's not that big. And, and B, I think you have to move slower. And so you have to get your bearings very very quickly. You have to understand where you are and where you're moving towards and you have to keep looking at the map. And the map I felt was much like is much more interesting to look at because it's a paper map as opposed to the map that you get in, in the Thief 4 game, which is like a it's like a Hitman style map and it shows where you are and it shows where all the buildings are in relation to you. Uh I don't know. There were just some some touches I felt that make Thief 3 a lot more interesting as a stealth game. Than uh, the new the new thief game. Hmm. I remember a lot of uh, people did not like Thief Four. In fact, uh, you know, once it came out long back, uh, a lot of the old uh, uh, fanboys, if I could call them, uh, they were not very happy with the game. They said something is missing. That it's just yeah. not what the thief game is. Yeah, so. that's putting it lightly. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but... Well, I haven't. I'm not a. I've never played Thief, so I wouldn't know. Well, yeah, I don't know. Like, I mean, T four had its had its issues. We discussed them at length, I think, on this podcast. Yes, 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 so, yes. We had that. Like, but Thief three does some really interesting things. The first thing I realized is that if if you get caught by the guards and mm. you lose a fight to them, what happens isn't that you're dead and you have to reload, but you start out in jail. And that. And that is one of the most fascinating things I found, like in that game, is that now that now you're in jail and you have to escape jail. Uh, oh, yeah, and and that's interesting. That's almost immediately to me more interesting than what most other games do. You know, like that is a system right there that they thought about and implemented that immediately makes sense and at the same time also pulls you like it it increases tension for the player. And it, it's not like it. Like I mean, it, it ups the stakes, but at the same time, like you know, as a player, you're like, all right, now how do I escape from this jail? And the first thing I thought about was that fine, like I'll escape now. Like, like you have to basically pick the pocket of a guard who comes close by. You have to lift the keys off his mm. off his belt, and then yeah. you get out of the cell, and then you have to sneak around and escape. But <laughs> no, I wondered. I wondered if if I get captured again. Will they uh, will they change the security? Will they put me in another cell? What will... and I don't know. I find I find that almost immediately much more interesting than anything I've seen so far in any new stealth game. Forget T4, but like even Splinter Cell Blacklist didn't have any system like this that made it I... genuinely interesting. I think Skyrim had this uh, where if you get caught, you know they'll basically. I don't, I don't remember, uh, but I think they had this, that if they catch you, they'll probably put you in jail and then you have to basically <laughs> break out of it. But I can vaguely remember because I usually am, I don't get caught or if I get caught, I basically run away and my follower kills the guard. So, oh. I don't know, but this is actually pretty interesting because usually from all the games that I have played, if you get caught, you know, you'll either die or you'll be, uh, they'll just 
say that you know you're in jail and they'll just like take some take money from you and stuff like yeah. that exactly yeah, yeah. like so they, they, like the next uh, the next scene is you standing outside a police station somewhere after ex- some yeah or yeah. or the last checkpoint is reloaded yeah but uh, like, this is I mean, pretty amazing i mean yeah yeah it it like it makes failure something compelling actually like it makes failure uh, uh, not just not just uh, like something you want to avoid but maybe something you want to try happening to see what uh, the consequences but, are but but then it's kind of like it's kind of like uh, it challenges the player and then if you uh, if you suck at it you either don't do it again or you actually keep doing it again and again just to you know have more fun yeah so you i get it... a win win situation for both the people yeah it, it it makes it more interesting for the player it makes it more interesting for the designer also right because mm-hmm. i don't know like see it would be interesting for me if you were in an open world game and depending on the city you you are in the dungeon you can be when you get caught by the by the guards there is different every time so now every time you go to every city like i don't know certain players there, there's a certain kind of player who gets this like vicarious thrill out of getting caught and escaping right yeah so you'll have players who who can claim that like you know i've escaped from every prison in the in this in this entire world like i'm the i'm the jailbreaker like i don't know i think that there's something interesting to that idea of making mm-hmm. failure something compelling uh yeah. i don't know arvin what do you think about that uh well i think it's good like it's just a sort of unique thing compared to the usual like fail state like i don't yeah. like yeah like to me at least like uh, i have like usually like uh, i don't play thief like try to i don't like get caught often like don't try to so there was only a, a couple of times and usually i just reload so yeah like because when i was like playing thief 3 back then i was like a super like you know quick save abuser so <laughs> so didn't really get like like even if i would mess up then i would just reload quickly i wonder if like, no, but, like some- No, but the idea is good you know like you try to uh, like integrate the fail state especially because like since in thief players do screw up a lot compared to usual other games so yeah yeah well i'm bad at still so yeah <laughs> yeah no, i mean like it doesn't really like is about like being bad at still it's just that like thief and thief you're not like a super powered being hmm. so and like a lot of surfaces thief. make noise and such which you don't know uh So you will eventually piss somebody off. Yeah, and a large portion of that game is built around failing and learning from your failures. You know. Yeah. Because thief is like essentially about the fact that it's almost always the environment around you will be dark. Almost always you have to like figure out how to traverse this environment with very little vision. So you have to rely on your other senses, especially hearing. so mm. i don't know like it plays with that in a very interesting way and i find that the new one didn't do as good a job as the like as he three did especially mm. in terms of like having other cues <coughs> what is going on around you uh yeah mm. i don't know i'm having a really good time with it yeah so it's on my list to buy games oh my god <laughs> this list yeah. is too long <laughs> Yeah, that's the other thing. The list is insane. Now the backlog I have also is oh, getting. Yes, insane. I was trying to avoid the backlog word. <laughs> oh well, I uh, have been playing Unfinished Swan on my PS Vita, and it's pretty amazing. Have you guys played that game? It is the game in which you're, you're you walk around the world, which is completely white, and you have to throw paint around it to. Yes, clear, yes, right? yes, yes, exactly. I mean, so, uh, I had been following that game for quite some time, especially when they had announced it, and I finally, now that I had a, now that I have a Vita, I finally bought it, and that game is pretty good. I mean, you know, it just starts out like this. So you are basically the son of uh, an artist who uh, used to paint. uh and make lots of paintings but she never used to finish them okay so all her paintings used to be unfinished 
and uh, oh. when he's in this yeah and when he goes to the orphanage uh, this person tells him that whoever is in charge of the orphanage she tells him ki you can keep at least you can keep only one of your mother's paintings and he chooses this unfinished swan and he keeps it with her, uh, with himself and one day he just basically i don't know he finds himself uh, in inside the painting so you know the the entire place the entire place is like white and initially i thought okay the game is loading or something and then i was like wait <laughs> this is taking too much of time and then i i noticed that there was like a small point in the middle and i found out okay this is the game so i pressed a button by accident and that's when it sort of you know squirted out paint and i was like oh okay this is what you have to do then i remembered then it sort of came back to me that okay this is what uh, you basically you know make your way by uh, splatting uh, splattering paint all over and that was uh, pretty cool so yeah i wouldn't say it's a very difficult game or something uh, it's something it's a very simple game uh, not it's just like 2 or 3 hours long maybe i don't know yeah so pretty small sounds, game yeah it sounds very relaxing though like you just walk around creating a world out of using paint yeah you just explore stuff and uh, i mean it's not huge as such but you just keep exploring here and there you go you you explore stuff and you just basically put paint on everything and you try to make sense of what it is so does it ever get really intense or is it always just like at a slow relaxed pace it or? it kind of gets intense towards the end especially when you know uh, monsters are kind of introduced in, uh, into the gameplay uh, oh. so the, it, yep there are some like evil being in which you have to run from that part that uh, that uh, entire level was like really amazing i was uh, i was pretty amazed by how cool i it went from this slow relaxing game to this really intense thing that you have to just keep moving forward if you and you have to find light all over the place because if there is no light you know pe- things will attack you so you have to keep moving forward <coughs> they did some pretty good stuff with it yeah it sounds really really cool actually like just i don't know it suddenly changed from this relaxing game to kind of like a horror game towards the end i guess ha ha uh, ha exactly it was it was like that but uh, i don't know i mean it's i won't say it's too horrifying because i can't play horror games at all but uh, it was just so much fun to play with them uh, play the game that's cool some some like fun and is it just uh, black and white throughout or do the do they ever change no it, it, they eventually do add uh, a bit of color but not much of, uh, not much is added <coughs> Uh, towards the end you know like as you progress through level so the first level is completely white black and white with golden footprints of the swan which sort of lead you where you have to go otherwise you know it'll be like uh, okay where do i have to go you'll be lost completely lost but uh, there are swan uh, footprints placed all over the place so you can basically find your way through and uh, eventually as the uh, levels progress colors are added like uh in the second level shadows the concept of shadows come up so okay uh even though the sh- uh, the screen is white you, but you can make sense of stuff because of shadows and then a little bit of blue is added because you sort of fall in the water and then your brush is doesn't have paint anymore it squirts water all over the place so water brings in wines which is green in color uh interesting so yeah so it gives you this uh, this feeling of unfinished stuff you know but then it makes sense because it is what uh, it is unfinished one you are inside of painting which was never finished so it makes sense like that interesting but, like it was this, it was like, does the story end properly at the end or is it like a cliffhanger or do they leave it open um it does end properly but I was somehow not very happy with the ending. It was like, "Okay, चलो ठीक है, fine. Uh, it's it's a sweet ending. That's it." But पता नहीं है. I was not that happy with the ending. Or maybe I just did not want the game to end or something like that. I don't know. Uh, but um, the gameplay, the the entire feeling which I had while playing the game, that was pretty good. But uh, towards the ending, I don't know. I I would say I was slightly disappointed with it. Maybe because it was just. to uh what's the word abstract yeah i guess mm-hmm. 
but uh, you have like these uh, challenges in it where you have to basically uh, there are balloons placed all over the world so you have to go to them and sort of pop them out, free the balloons and then you know you using that you can buy stuff which i never did i don't know how that would make stuff uh, necessary but yeah it's fun to it's kind of challenging to you know go around and reach place those places and try to free a balloon that's that's the only thing i could say i never really checked out um, the store which is in game sounds yeah it sounds really cool man it sounds interesting hmm. uh, what kind like i mean what kind of puzzles do you have in this game well mostly in the first for first part of the game it's basically just trying to make your way around and you have to uh it's mostly making your way around the whole place so initially it's like splattering paint all over and then you know just trying to figure out where you have to go and then uh the and then you basically get lost in this maze all right and you have to make sense of where you have to go and you know, reach the other end of the place uh apart from that there is this one very interesting thing that they do uh, towards the end of the game they sort of give you the power to sort of make uh, bridges and uh, you know like make huge cubes so you can uh, if there is a huge gap in between and you can't go to the other side you can basically make a huge square or a block kind of a thing and you can choose the height and the width of that block and then you can use that to uh, step on and then you know go and reach the other gap so cross the gap so that was a uh, that was pretty interesting so you can make like uh, platforms for yourself as well as bridges to cross a particular place so oh. that's that's kind of like a puzzle element because you have to sort of uh, figure out how to reach you know reach another place uh, by drawing platforms and bridges So, yeah, it sounds very really interesting. Hmm. I won't say it's got like too much of puzzle elements going on. It's it's pretty simple and it's pretty straightforward. Yeah. Yeah, I mean it se- seems like a interesting 3R kind of experimental huh. game with some really, yeah, yeah. It's, really cool art style idea. Yeah, it's it's yeah, I, mean, I won't I mean, say it's got like a lot of stuff going on, just simple stuff. Just sit at home, one day just if you have too much time on your hands just check it out finish it in one one mm. sitting yeah yeah like i don't think this is the kind of game that you can play for too long either uh, ha you'll you will eventually get bored of it yep yeah sounds really cool sounds oh really and super- they even had like this uh, easter egg in which you know there's this telescope and when you look into it and you zoom in you basically see uh, the journey's concept art <laughs> i was surprised with it hmm Have you have you played Journey? Has everyone here played Journey? By the way, just asking. Yes, I have. Arvind has it. No, Arvind says Arvind was murmuring he doesn't have a console. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. This is usual complaint. Journey is awesome. I love that game so much. Uh, I like Flower as well. I did not play Flow, but I love Flower as well. I I played Flow and Journey. Uh, I looked at Flower and I was like, this is a like. This is not for me. <laughs> mm. I uh, wouldn't say I finished it or something. I played uh, like a bit of it, but I liked the whole concept that was going on in the game. Oh, apart from that, I also started this game called Danganronpa. Yes, Danganronpa. Yeah. Talk so, about it. Hmm. Okay. It is interesting. I ha- I have just started, so I have just reached at the point where we uh, where we meet up with that. weird teddy bear kind no, of thing just, just explain the explain the basic setting don't don't start with like you met a teddy bear just oh, okay so is so basically the game is about uh, this high sc- this group of high school students who yeah. are invited into a school which is this very very elite school it doesn't just allow anybody inside it it you need to be like excellent in that particular thing in in one particular So, for example, and you know, they call it the ultimate. You have to be ultimate in a particular thing, right? So, for example, uh, there's this guy who is the ultimate baseball player. I mean, he's he's no one can defeat him. He's kind of like that. 
then there's the ultimate biker gang dude who if the, all the biker gangs in Japan love this guy they they'll do whatever he asks them to do and uh, so on so forth there are other people as well and if, th- then there is the player who uh, is who feels he's pretty ordinary and he doesn't know why he's been invited into the place so it turns out that when he got the letter for uh, uh, you know invitation from the school it says that you were the ultimate lucky person because they basically did a raffle thing or a lucky draw and uh, he his name came up so they say you were the ultimate uh, lucky person uh, and that's why you have, you've been invited so he's like okay i can't say no because if you go to that school your future is set you know it's kind of like i don't know the iit of schools <laughs> maybe i don't know so is he that's why he goes to it and eventually once he reaches the school you know he's waiting for uh, the orientation program to start and that's when things go weird uh, he wakes up, he he sort of blacks out and he wakes up in this weird place uh it's it's a classroom but there are like metal bars all over the place uh, all over the window uh, there are surveillance cameras and he doesn't know what is going on so he tries to find where everyone is eventually he goes to the move, main hall and he finds the other students over there and now they're trying to make sense of what this place is so that's the that's uh, the game i've played till now it's a pretty interesting setting though okay yeah it's about to get really really weird that's all i'm going to tell you like i i know the premise of dangan rupa uh okay like it is about to get crazy and weird mm mm-hmm. yeah and it's about to get fun so, <laughs> so a friend recommended it to me and he was, he was like okay now that you have a vita you need to play this game and i was like okay fine let me purchase it so i have both the games like one and two so let's see it's 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 got this anime style right and i love anime so i don't mind the style at all and um, it's i don't know it, it somehow the gameplay feels very similar to how persona 4 is in the sense that <laughs> there are dialogues happening and then you have to sort of choose a particular uh, uh you know choice of dialogue that you have to say um, it's kind of like that and you have to remember what the other person said you know like in persona 4 you kind of have to do that as well in order to solve the mysteries but i think there is more uh, mm, there's more of a you know you you have to see see remember each and every not each and every dialogue but some important dialogues that go on so that's that's what i feel that's what i feel the game is about let's see still haven't progressed very much so can't say yeah dangan roper and dangan roper 2 are pretty pretty great games anyway like yeah it's fun i i like i hope you have a good time with them uh oh yeah and and i also meet this that weird teddy bear whatever his name is start started with an m if i remember correctly yeah. so yeah. yeah he's basically turns out he's the headmaster of that place and he tells these people that there's only one way to get out of this place because th- these people are now trapped in the, in that weird place that they all woke up in and he says that the only way to get out of here is either to uh, you know either you die uh, or you live you live together and you'll be out when once you die or you can kill somebody that yeah that's 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 happened <laughs> okay so you know the premise then yeah 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 okay okay so then you you like you should have said that uh yeah uh, I, yeah really, i just really. sort of Yeah, it's really uh-huh. really interesting that the idea of the game is based around you uh-huh. you have to kill someone and not get caught to be able to yeah. leave that otherwise you'll be there and for the you time. basically now you have to ensure that you're safe and you have to also in- ensure you know what is going on and you know yeah. you basically be wary of the other person so now you can't trust the other person interesting stuff uh-huh. So what else has been going on in the gaming world? Oh yeah, I read something about the Steam early access guidelines and rules that were changed. What what happened? 
Steam early access guidelines is being changed. Uh, Arvind, you want to talk about this? Yeah, I think they did something where like uh, they clarified that uh, you cannot sell your like. Uh, these are all guidelines, by the way. Nobody is gonna look up e- each game, see if like they conform to the rules. But the guidelines are that you can't. If you only have a tech demo or something, then you you shouldn't sell your game. You should wait until and don't sell the game on promises. Like it, the player should buy the one that like the version that you have right now. So yeah, but there, there, like, there, is, there are specific rules now. Like I I think they're saying when uh, Steam keys are being distributed offsite, you have to say that it's an early access game. Yeah, that right. is, it's all right because they can't enforce that. Like they cannot no, realistically. No, this, is, this is enforced. This 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 one is being enforced. Uh, I think there is a penalty for it if they do not. If they do not do this, I think there is a penalty for it. Because there is another one that's like a. No, not uh, all of them are rules. There are only one or two rules. Like I think that the the this one is rule and another there's another one rule. Like everything else is a guideline, like you said. Like just. try and follow them yeah like but yeah it's it's good i guess but yeah like i don't really see this as a really big thing i guess it's just valve uh, slowly learning uh, how like early access works and stuff so yeah, i imagine I like the fir- first response to increase uh, early access credibility which is kind of taken a hit recently hmm weird what were you saying arvin now i was saying that like they, they are just they like i imagine the ru- more rules and stuff will be added as people figure early access out because the oh. crucial thing uh, that like for me in those rules were like if you th- if you can only develop this game assuming <laughs> that like you know you will get super sales from the early access but then early access is not for you So that's a thing which a lot of people actually did. Like even Double Fine, who were like, yeah. "Okay, let's make an early access game. Then we'll make money like Minecraft, and then we'll update the game." So that's yeah, then all. Yeah, actually get around to making the game. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of sad actually if you think about it. Uh, yeah. I think the reason this is being done is because of stuff like what Double Fine has done, and because what other plenty of other early access games have done, which is basically promise the moon, get a decent number of sales, and then suddenly pull the rug out from under everyone who has bought the game by saying, "Hey, we we are made a we underestimated. We thought we could we could do this, but we thought we'd sell more." Yeah, that's like, a that's like, actually like I think that this is a bit of bit weird thing because. Every game usually starts with a with an idea that is way big for the developers to realistically achieve. Like nobody, you know, like anyone who's making a game, nobody is like, okay, I'm just going to make this small game with like no original ideas, and that's how it's going to happen. <laughs> like everyone starts with a huge idea in their head, a huge and vision. Yeah. So the problem is that now, like early access people, like a lot of early access games, they start with this. insane idea like okay it's going to be just like real life everything from real life is going to be in the game but then like you can't realistically do that and like minecraft is a is an exception because it had a unusual sales curve whereas it it kept going higher and higher and uh so so you can't really not every game gets to be like that in fact i think like only minecraft kerbal space program these are the two games which have consistently have a Had a really like you know strange sales curve yeah. over the course of the year, hmm. and even yeah, Kerbal fine. like Kerbal gets into sales now. Like Kerbal, if 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 Kerbal were selling like as much as Minecraft, then Kerbal wouldn't be like fifty sixty percent discounted. So it's even that, and the other thing I would say about this is that like you know Minecraft is a real aberration because it's not even on Steam. Yeah. Hmm. Though, like towards the end, like their the ever increasing numbers were because they were porting it to every console. Yeah, there. yeah, it was on Xbox and it was yeah. going to be on Oculus apparently. Uh, whatever, like it is, it's doing a dance. It's uh, it it was everywhere at the end. Yeah, right. Yeah. 
so so yeah like that that's just something which like i think uh, it's just too much uh, like in our industry at least it seems to be like you know some some new thing pops up then everything everybody just jumps on the bandwagon without thinking if their game like should be on this or like like yeah, you know like free, like yeah. free to play like uh, mobile stuff like facebook <laughs> games everything like it's like okay early access is the new thing because two games were and like for, like by the way like minecraft when it was first out there was no such thing as early access hmm early access yeah. as a term has only been popularized very recently so so minecraft at that time was a fun game to play from like the first alpha that's why people kept kept buying it like even i like i bought it big, like uh, when it was i think when it was 15 bucks so roughly like around the time when the beta was going to come out because it was fun at that time i knew that even if like the the game was stop updating tomorrow i would still have a lot of fun with it but like a lot of games now are like built on promises and i guess that's a bit of bit weird might be related to like you know how our culture is like all the media all the news is always like okay look this next thing is going to be the most amazing thing <laughs> like right now it's like okay witcher 3 you guys it's going to be the best game ever made then when <laughs> witcher 3 comes out then whatever next is coming like at that time new yeah, elder scrolls I, game I, no yeah. it's not just that it's not just that like the next thing that's coming is the best thing it's also the last thing when you play that is garbage compared to the next thing that's coming yeah like yeah, years to wait till this, when when they when they put out their sports games like fifa 15 is the best fifa game ever made fifa 14 that was a piece of garbage <laughs> if fifa that's that's the real yeah man like uh, yeah that's what i'm saying like you know like what switcher 3 comes out then like by that time new elder scrolls hype train will be on so everyone <laughs> would be like okay yeah this is this is going to revolutionize everything yeah and then the next thing so so i guess it's it's part of because a lot of our press and stuff is just like it's it's not press in the traditional sense it's more like a marketing machine with a small critical opinion attached to it Yeah, with that, like, like it's an extended arm of the marketing wing of publishing houses. Yeah, and like what that sort of culture like promotes ultimately is you know like a lot of stuff like this where people promise the moon because it's like oh my god like you you will get things that no game has ever had before and you Yeah, I mean the weird thing at the end of the day is you know 90% <laughs> of content on most video games <clears throat> sites is advertorial hmm. you know like for hmm. better or worse they are advertising our product and as developers like we just we are fighting to get them to advertise our product so it's it's a really really weird hmm. and fucked up system if you yeah. think about it in that sense you know yeah it's a it's uh it's sort of similar to i don't know like automobile magazines i guess you know where like yeah it's just like the new car that's coming out that's going to be insane blow you away like forget the forget previous car like 2013 a years model that's like a waste of time hmm. might as well as be like the car from flintstones so <laughs> but then that's marketing i guess <laughs> yeah yeah and then yeah. like i suppose like you know 20 years later like i mean that garbage car becomes vintage and it's shiny <laughs> and, and yeah something yeah. everybody wants Again. like it's weird uh, but it's very yeah. interesting it's definitely interesting for sure to so examine yeah, like, yeah. Uh, no yeah so so like the the one advantage that might come out of this is that the public learns more about the process hopefully but yeah but like it's just like a a sort of business model where the people who jumped in they jumped in without thinking much about it it was like oh yeah we'll get the money then everything will be fine and usually mm-hmm. plans like that don't like turn out very well I mean you get the odd game that you know like sells a lot and like everyone's happy like because like some games have done early access right it's not like every single early access game has been bad yeah for But, sure some of them it makes sense like i i think the what is it, what's their name you know? <coughs> i think the life is feudal guys are going to do a good job with early access honestly like i was looking mm-hmm. at their updates recently it seems like they're putting out regular updates and that they're talking to their audience so mm. far at least you know uh, that being said it's still a recent game uh, do you have any examples of like someone who's done it really well uh 
Uh, well, Kerbal, Kerbal has done a, tra- a really good yeah. job of early access. Prison Architect, they've done a good yeah. job. No, but by and large, like I think the main problem here is that like when you sell somebody or like pr- promise dreams, there is absolutely no chance you can fulfill that because the the thing that people can imagine in their heads that's always going to be more yeah, powerful it's than better than, than what anything you cook up, man. I mean, there's, yeah. that's not even. It's not possible for you to live up to the promise inside their head because it's inside their head, you know. Yeah. Hmm. Unless I suppose you're making like an early access version of Five Nights at Freddy's, but why would you do that? I guess. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah, like I think it's just a thing that uh, li- like a lot of video game models, it, it was maybe like used a bit too much, and like for games that did not necessarily fit it. Like that's one thing which like we don't you do like we as an industry where like everyone just jumps instead of thinking wait is this right for my the thing that I'm trying to make or not? Yeah, I mean that that has have been happening a lot lately. We've been had we've had a lot of uh, let's jump on this bandwagon without bothering to check or uh, whether it is our bandwagon, whether it's a bandwagon our audience wants us to jump on, or whether we should just like keep doing our own thing. Uh, there's a lot of like uh, waiting to see what the next big success is. I mean, this this generation, the the addition of MOBA, <laughs> MOBA yeah, elements. There are a lot of yeah. Yeah. <laughs> MOBA elements and open world elements have become like the the new calling card for this generation. Yeah, yeah. open world is so 2013, man. Like, keep up. <laughs> Now it's like all MOBA and uh, in-game economy. In-game economy is the big one. Mm-hmm. Which should nicely bring us to like CS Go actually. Oh God, yeah. Oh, what happened with CS Go? So depressing. Okay, so so the gist of it is that Valve released like you know you remember that uh, TF2 thing where you fought the robots and you had to yeah, buy yeah. a pass for it. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. So Valve released something like that here, but what happens is like the missions are actually just like rare stuff you can do normally, like kill hundred. Like people well, or like kill ten yeah. chickens. Yeah, for sure. Like yeah. I think the the interesting thing is that Valve has been doing this with Counter Strike for a while. They've been having offer what they call operations, and mm. you buy all access passes for operations, and you get all the missions in it. <coughs> right. Uh-huh. And uh-huh. this time they made something called Operation Vanguard, and instead of okay. an access pass, what they sold, or instead of an all access pass, this time they sold an access pass. Okay. And once you bought it, that doesn't mean you own all the content inside it. You have to pay more money for the for the to get the remaining content. Mm-hmm. And they did the uh, unbelievably shitty thing of having uh, time delays between missions. So, like after the first two missions, the third mission is locked for four days. What? So what? Do I send lives? Uh, do I ask my friends to send me lives for that? <laughs> no, 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 no. no. <laughs> You don't you don't get sent lives or anything for it. You have to wait four days to play the next thing. I don't even think you can pay money to unlock it. Can you, Arvind? Uh, no, I don't think so. You just have to wait. You just have to wait, What? and I think they they've done this basically to to make people keep like so that their content lasts longer. Essentially, I think that's the idea behind it, so that people don't run mm. through it immediately and get bored and like stop playing people, the game. People are not bored of Counter Strike. Oh, I, no, I mean, bored. it's not the. I don't think it's the boredom that's affecting them. I think it's more the they want. They want people to keep playing. Uh, like, I yeah, I don't understand the rational rationality. But yeah, like uh, the ideas that they have. Uh, first, you got to pay more stuff. Uh, like once you pay the the access pass, then you have to pay for two more packs, and then yeah. what you have to, and then the rewards you get are actually crates. So you have to buy crate keys to unlock them. So, so basically, it's like you pay for something, you get a reward, and then you pay them more to unlock the reward. And nice. there's also like mission cooldowns. So it's like all the things you hate about like free to play and Facebook games, like okay. combined. That's like a pretty weird move by Steam. And I'm usually like very happy with how Steam does their game stuff. I mean, mm. Dota is free to play and all that, but. 
I don't know. Ew, why it did they do this? So far, I don't know why. I think this might be an experiment where they're trying to see if they can get away with this. I hope <coughs> they don't. I know. Uh, seriously, come on. That's like a cheap shot. <laughs> yeah, it will is. Be, they're valid. They'll probably get away with this. Like, I don't think so. I don't. They just so. need to say. They just need to say those three magical words. Half Life Three confirmed. Okay, wait. That's four. Uh-huh. <laughs> They just need I, to see, I, say those words. Oh man! They're never do like I mean, Gabe Newell has pretty much categorically come out and said they're never doing single player again. Hmm. So it's not hmm. happening. We're never getting Half Life Three, according to me. I mean, unless they figure out a way to do multiplayer, and, and if that's just no, no one wants that. Hmm. Yeah. Like it's just a, I mean it's news in the sense that like Valve is slowly like you know going into the like with Dota and this and that like yeah yeah it's it's becoming it's a bit sad like is what I think yeah like, seriously it is it is but I mean yeah they're going in the direction of the money man I mean yeah uh, no, I think that's where it's like like. Say what you want about Gabe Newell. He is a smart guy, and I, like I mean, he probably sees the industry moving in that direction. So he's moving away from free to play. He's moving. No, he's not moving away from free to play. He's moving away from single player. He's moving towards multiplayer. He's moving towards the kind of experiences that people will pay more money to play. Uh, and I guess free to play is something people want. I don't know why. I don't understand why. Maybe maybe kids these days prefer. Instead of paying just once and getting a good product, paying <laughs> thousand times, paying more money and getting like a product that like fucking hamstrings your fun. I don't understand. Ah, <laughs> uh, whatever. My frustrations with respect to mobile game design are gonna come out now. Uh, no, I think like it's a, it's a bit of a tricky thing like to analyze metrics because obviously we'll get more uh, like uh, what do you call. More downloads, more users with free-to-play stuff because it's free. But is that sustainable? I don't know. Like you get more downloads, more users, but at the same time, do you get people who are actually engaging with what you're making, or do you get people who are trying to find a way to kill time? You know, hmm. I, I like I don't know. Like like you said, when people buy a new game, like when you said this at the beginning of this podcast, when people hmm. buy Skyrim, they're Willing to actively sit down and defend their sixty dollar purchase, right? Mm-hmm. They automatically care more about what they, what they, what they're playing because they spent money on it, mm-hmm. right? And and that off the bat, right off the bat, that's more interesting to me than anything that I've seen so far. Uh, like that that's come out of mobile. Like unless you're talking about games that are made on mobile that. You know the people who have made them actually give a shit about which. I don't know. I'm sad to say that those, those, that is not the norm for mobile. Yeah, it's a bit. Uh, yeah, I guess ultimately though, like at least this is more of like you know maybe it's just like me being a, like an old person or whatever. But uh, it's just like the in-game economy economy stuff feels like. It's something in a game which is not directly to my enjoyment. You know, it's it's for those like. The people who sold this to me, or in some case, like didn't sell this to me. So it's a thing where, like, I'm like, well, yeah, why is this in the game I paid money for? Like, it's not benefiting me. Hmm. It's like I, I was listening to a conversation about Assassin's Creed Unity, and apparently that also has, like, I think yeah. you know the the that has like a cynical version of this <coughs> thing that actually fun at microtransactions. It doesn't have microtransactions at all. But no, it does. They have... uh, like. I heard that it has like three types of currency, and like some chests need to be like first you need to pl- oh, play the mobile app to unlock them. Like you don't have to pay to unlock anything in Assassin's Creed Unity. At least that that much I'm sure about. There's no. No, yeah. Like what happens is there are three currencies. Okay. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. So there's the in-game currency, then there's the currency you can buy, which you can like also use in place of the game currency and then there's yes. a third currency which you get while by playing the app or something yeah, yeah. so the in, the in game currency stuff which you collect while playing inside the animus or whatever it's called now Helix, i guess mm-hmm. 
apparently you can use that to buy booster packs in the game which give mm-hmm. you like more power attacking for 5 minutes or whatever mm-hmm. and well, wow. there's language in the game that there is deliberately pokes fun at microtransactions in mobile games mm-hmm. when referring to that so i don't know i don't know if it's like ubisoft directly being direct and saying yeah we're going to make money off this or it's ubisoft saying ha ha look at mobile games they're so stupid right mm-hmm. I don't know. Maybe yeah. over time, like Assassin's Creed will become free to play, and it'll just become like microtransactions. Yeah. I mean, it is already like an annual <laughs> franchise, right? And like two games released simultaneously. Yeah. But stop talking, Arvind. Do you realize how horrible the thing you're saying is? What? <laughs> it is an annual franchise now, right? And like it's Rogue an and this released. Free to play, like a free to play Assassin's Creed. God, that would be. the future is here i mean oh. it, it it isn't that much of a stretch like isn't like like half of assassin's creed since 2 is basically you know buying shit in a city and upgrading the it to get more meaningless currency to buy more stuff so i mean that's like a shell of a free to play game already all you have to do is remove the parkour from it and like you have the free to play thing right there so that's all you need pretty much here yeah. oh wow <laughs> yeah That. Jeez, I hope that never happens. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of Cityville or something. Now that you say it that way, God damn you! <laughs> I already hate the city so much. <laughs> yeah, you're giving me another reason. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, like once you look at that, it's 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 easy easy to see where it comes from. Uh, the assassin. It was since Assassin's Creed Creed Brotherhood, I think, or maybe even two. Uh, Brotherhood. No, 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 not yeah. Brotherhood. I think it's since Revelations. No, no, Brotherhood definitely had the thing now where you go around buy stuff in Rome. And... Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It was from Brotherhood. Yeah, in two it was different. In two you get money and then I think you upgrade your home huh, for huh. no reason. But like I think until Brotherhood they were still making good games. I don't know what happened after Brotherhood that they just lost yeah. the plot after it for a while. Like Black Flag was fine. Like I didn't mind Black Flag. They were doing some interesting mm. stuff there, but mm. I, it's I don't know. There, there was a point where it looked like the series would end and you would get into the modern world finally and play as Desmond and finish the damn game. And now it looks like Ubisoft <coughs> didn't ever let this damn thing end. You know? Yeah, now they are the, like it's clear from the meta narrative that they're not interested in like Desmond is any resolution. The meta yeah. narrative, you know, they they're never going to the Like I mean, we're in the future, I guess. But yeah, like the meta narrative, like at this point, word. just exists to like fuel itself. It's not interested in like going anywhere. It's just there to like sustain yeah. itself, basically. The meta narrative is now there so that the uh, like you can go to more whatever past hmm. historical era they want to revisit. You know, uh, yeah, it's getting really, really boring in that sense. But but ships and naval battle and oh my god pirates. <coughs> yeah, you can and do that. Crafting animals. <laughs> oh <Bush>, god. <laughs> yeah. I can't wait for like I don't know like what was like assassin dogs cry something <laughs> just combine everything. Assassin dogs cry. That is the. That is the Pulitzer Prize winning version of like the open world game Assassin's Creed. Soon, right? <laughs> soon, yeah. my friend. Soon. Yeah, I mean they they are pretty much uh, just applying the same sort of model to like it's pretty clear that like Watch Dogs is supposed to be like a GTA skin on the Ubisoft game, and like Far Cry is the FPS skin on the Ubisoft game now, and Assassin's Creed mm. is the like third person action. kind of thing on the s so yeah it's it's kind of like yeah like these games have made us too cynical like no other entertainment medium has done that so quickly like people in films didn't do this till like 1990s which what they have done to, to us yeah i agree business yeah it's just like since it started out as more of a uh, like i don't have any claims to do, do, to this like i don't really know the history but i think like stuff like books history that they uh, tv books 
they kind of started as this weird like oddities instead of means to make money whereas games started out as like okay we need to sell toys to kids so uh, no i don't think so i don't think so i don't think that is the case with uh, with games like i mean games started out as like a bunch of geeks who used to play dungeons and dragons just having ideas and making them on their own man there was no it did not start off with the impetus to make big money it in fact like you can point out that the first time big the the like people realized they could make big money out of this and big money got involved that was in the market crash right the first time the first big games market crash was after big money got involved and then they got their act together they realized how they could monetize it and actually start making big big money with this and now we are where we are <laughs> hmm. uh but it it never it didn't start that way like it it started out like anything else like people figured figured that there's something new that they could do cool shit with you know that's it it didn't have anything to do with selling toys to children that that came much much later i mean i like you but yeah like i don't know like it's so it this was just does it have very but yeah it's just like these games have made us way too cynical yeah i mean some of them have I, like overall there's for all of this there's still like the uh, Oh, just interestingly enough, Shadow of Mordor is having a new update. You can play as a new character in the. It's not the Black Hand. I, I played it. Yeah, like it's the. Yeah, it had a one GB update. I yeah had to download the whole thing. Yeah, I was surprised. <laughs> like, what's worth one GB in that update? It's just a new character model. Like you play as well, the Ariel. Like, there's a there's a like there's a decent amount of data that comes with a new character playable character model, right? They have they to re- even swap out the voice. Like Lethariel still has the voice of Talion. which makes it me very scenes? like no like cutscene is the same in cutscene you are italian like uh, but in like, the game it's it's uh, it's yeah. uh, italian so oh yeah, wow so it, that's awesome. yeah so <laughs> it's like a very lazy hack job thing like literally well, I mean, like I don't, also yeah i don't think they were ever claiming that uh, it would be like they just switch the character out i don't think they were claiming that it would be a new story or whatever no no yeah no, i know that but w- why 1 gb like i want to know where that 1 gigabyte went the nation needs to know <laughs> well i mean when you re when you reintroduce like a character model but this time it has a playable rig and everything right there's a lot more data involved with that There be a considerable yeah, one gigabyte, like, like probably too much. Like, yeah, it, I don't know I, about that. Like, no, nah, I don't know. I think it. I think that's about right. Hmm. Didn't Sounds they have about. this free DLC where you can play as the Black Hand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That too. That's free. <coughs> And is that out? Yeah, yep. It's the same deal. Like voice, everything remains same. Just the more character model changes. Yep. What? 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 <laughs> Yeah, yeah, even the attacks and everything is the same. Everything so is the same. There's no story as such. It's just the no, no new model. story. Same thing. Oh, what the hell? <laughs> what is that? It's a uh, yeah. I don't know. It's interesting. Like I mean, it's free, so at least that's the cool part about it. You know. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> yeah. The very least, it's not. They're not charging like. Five dollars for this and being dicks. They are like, uh, like missing an opportunity with the DLC though. Like so far, all of it has been very lackluster. Hmm. Like the game has such that like I when when the Lithariel update, I was like, yeah, sure, let's let's play as Lithariel. Why the hell? They not? haven't done any real DLC yet. So is what I'd say. I'd say these. This is yeah. you know what this sounds like to me. This sounds like there's a programmer somewhere who thought, yeah, you know, female playable character. Dal dete hain. Kitna time lagega? Let's do the work required for that. Hello Assassin's Creed. <laughs> yeah, like I mean, <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, see, you know what? Automatically on one level, it makes them better than Assassin's Creed, right? Hmm. When, when, like, people who have already worked on that game have said, like, no, no, forget people who have already worked on that game. They've already released a game with a female character model that has all the animations that an Assassin's Creed character has. Yeah, mm-hmm. it can, it cannot be as difficult. it cannot be as difficult as they're saying it is to integrate uh if if they were saying yeah. we're we're going with a completely new engine this time it's everything is brand spanking new then also it's like the guy like who was the this thing on assassin's creed 3 and like the yeah. liberation he said it's he not, said but, it but yeah no. 
uh, like where i was saying about the dlc like shadow of order i was like yeah. they are selling a season pass and it's been like what like months since the game came out but i know like the dlc has been very cash grab sort of well there's not been any paid dlc so far well they are selling the season pass and all of it is ah, paid the like there's like there, five five dollars lots of yeah, yeah yeah there is there is a season pass out i agree with you but none of the dlc that's come out so far has been paid it's all in free no it has Wait. like like there is the test of something like let me tell you what's it like there are a, there is a lot of dlc out for this game hang on there's paid dlc out for it yeah there is a lot of uh, dlc let me tell you which one is it uh, so the dl there are nine dlc packs available already out of it seven are paid and it's like skull crushers warband hidden blade rune rising storm rune endless challenge test of wisdom test of speed yeah there's like one of them is the season pass and like so there's six pieces of dlc and all of them are just some random like you know challenge like, stuff yeah like recycled stuff in fact one of the challenge is basically just like it gives you a like a, a set of uh, war chiefs and like captains Mm. Once you kill that challenge over bye bye like <laughs> yeah so i don't know why that wow. thing was is being sold for like 5 2 dollars 3 3 dollars like because money <laughs> yeah wow that's yeah, that that's seems, sad that seems silly like they if they they're charging th- like i have that's a dlc so far exhausted the 30 dollars in the hmm. speaking of dlcs and stuff uh what what dlcs which dlcs which games do you think had like the best dlcs <coughs> ever which were you know kind of like it, they made you want to pay money for it best dlc that that's tough bioshock bioshock 2 minerva's den yeah that's a good one then uh, uh, like xcom and civ like oh my are God. obvious candidates those are not dlcs man come on like envy yeah. within is, a, is an expansion yeah oh i guess so if you want The D- D- DLC, okay. Well, yeah, yes. I guess. Uh, hmm. Then I wonder what. Hmm. Like that's why Minerva's then I I think qualifies because it it is exactly Saints that. Row. Saints Row four at least like and even three like all the DLC was very like shoddy. Hmm. Like it wasn't the at the quality of the main game. Hmm. <laughs> I'm going to say something that Arvind will not like. Which. Mass Effect Three: The Citadel. <laughs> <laughs> that is that's a good one. I like that one. Uh, oh, that's the that's the fan. Yeah, that's the fan service one. That's the one ah, in which okay. just before you go to do the final battle, everyone hangs out at the Citadel and they take a photograph and they have a party and all that stuff. Oh my yeah. god! Like. Shepard के साथ सेल्फी के लिए यू नो यू हैव टू पे मनी दैट्स अ बिट वियर्ड इट्स लाइक या लाइक इट्स इट्स सॉर्ट ऑफ लाइक अ थिंग दैट अ लाइक अ फैन मॉड एज अ फैन मॉड इट वुड हैव बीन ग्रेट बट लाइक एज अ थिंग दैट दे आर सेलिंग लाइक एज क्रिएटर्स इट्स वियर्ड वेल इट्स नॉट इट लाइक इट्स नॉट जस्ट अ सेल्फी देयर इज डायलॉग एंड स्टफ यू नो देयर वाज दिस वन डायलॉग दैट आई एक्चुअली रियली लाइक्ड एंड दैट वाज व्हेन शेपर्ड एंड कैरस आर सिटिंग ऑन टॉप एंड यू नो दे लाइक uh th- this is really cool thing, right? ha 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 that that thing that was but that is yeah that's not that's not the citadel dlc ha, that ha, ha, ha. citadel is a separate thing entirely no, but i'm saying after that after that dialogue i don't think they needed anything else <laughs> <laughs> that was yeah, pretty they're cool sh- they were shooting shit from that uh, from from mm-hmm. from the top of that uh, mm-hmm. yeah yeah that is that is a really good moment <laughs> um, yeah Yeah, Mass Effect Three. Yeah, like like it's it's a weird thing because like a lot of the game is good, but then people are still hurt about that ending. So that yeah. fucking ending, man. That was not that was not yeah. a well done. Yeah, game. even I am pissed. Yeah, even I am pissed about the ending. <laughs> but it's weird, you know. It's it like what was that game like out in like what? It's been like what four or five years now. Like Pretty it's been a while. Yeah. It's been three three years or so at least. Oh yeah, three and... years. Yeah. Yeah, that's gonna take a long while until like I'm pretty yeah, sure like you know when yeah all of us are old we we'll, like tell our kids like were you there when the Mass Effect three ending was out like yeah, <laughs> yeah I was there I was at the forums I saw I I've seen some shit. 
man. I never finished the game, so I'm like, okay, whatever. <laughs> I like I yeah. think it had it had phenomenal moments and the, the reason I like I'm willing to I'm okay with it at the end of the day is because <coughs> it's so so good like it's yeah, usually yeah, yeah like the this new bioware like I'm I'm categorizing new bioware as basically starting mass effect 1 is like Fair it's enough. they're very good in like character moments they're probably the best in like yeah, character yeah, moments easily. but like in the overarching narrative is usually where they falter like mm-hmm. none of the mass effect games had like super good or even good overarching narrative but the characters mass were one. mass effect 1 i think came closest to having a great yeah. overarching yeah. narrative and i think you know what the, the sad thing about bioware is yeah. that they Seren are is still like the most like yeah. the best villain i think bioware has ever made probably because they they spent time trying to create him into a human being uh, yeah and they don't do that with anything else like I don't know. I think the most interesting thing about about like BioWare, the, like the new BioWare that you're talking about, is uh, for better or worse. The sad thing is they're at their best when they're doing <laughs> the typical narrative so far. You know, which is hero joins mighty organization yeah. and goes to save the world. Yeah. And they, whenever they try to break off from that formula, they've not done too well. Like except mm. with with Inquisition. Uh, and that oh, that Empire? that's our that's last thing last thing effect. we should yeah. just mention before I, i guess before we end is that inquisition won't be releasing in india and we have no idea why yeah. but we had decided to pull it from india pakistan and bangladesh at the last minute so if you are if you live in india and you want to buy dragon age inquisition you have to go to amazon.co.uk and pay 50 pounds i guess if you think that that that's worth it for the game uh no but they gave a reason right The reason was it had gay sex or something in it. <laughs> no, that's yeah. not that. That isn't the reason that they've given. They they have openly said that sexuality was not the reason why. Yeah, it was oh, like some obscenity so? laws or something. Yeah, it has. It's a vague reason that they've not specified properly. Mm-hmm. They have not specified the actual reason for not putting that game and not selling the game in India. Uh, and uh, if 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 sexuality was the reason, then why did they release Mass Effect, Mass Effect Two, Dragon Age, Dragon Age Two? These games yeah. already yeah. feature the things that they're talking about, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah it's a it's bit. It's not that inexplicable. Yeah, like I don't remember any like you know watchdog organization, ha ha ha, like making oh. a claim about like, uh, like that if Dragon Age, if we like you know like if we catch any couples playing Dragon Age, then we'll like beat them up or something. Like, I don't know. Yeah. Well, I, I, you you really can't see the weird <laughs> thing in India is. Playing mm-hmm. Dragon Age is not illegal. What would be illegal is distributing it, mm-hmm. based on our laws. But anyway, this is like a like we thought talked about this earlier. This will get political if we keep going. So let's <laughs> let's leave it at that. Get this discussion. Yeah. Uh, it sucks. We were all looking forward to it. At least I know I, I was. And yeah, I, I was too. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, and it, by all accounts, it's an excellent game. So I'm just more like I'm. <coughs> sad. Not but then out. like judging from the pc reviews at least you might be like like because there are a lot of bugs in it apparently so yeah, you there are yeah like it was made to look good by like coincidentally unity launching with it otherwise people yeah. would be all angry people about the bugs people would be pissed off people would be pissed off like unity yeah. is unity is horrible unity is a hot mess <laughs> right now hmm. yeah uh, so is far cry 4 from what i heard Yeah, in- Far Cry Four seriously, but it's just basically Far Cry Three in mountain. <laughs> yeah. But it still But... has bugs. That doesn't stop it from having. Bugs. No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm being yeah. a dick. I, like <laughs> they've done a lot of bullshit yeah. in that. Game. I can understand that it's buggy on launch. They'll fix it. Ubisoft will fix it. At least they're being like, at least they're acknowledging that the game is buggy on launch out the gate, and they are trying to fix it. Yeah, but though it's yeah. kind of sad that now that is what gets you like brownie points. I mean, instead of yeah. just launching, acknowledging that you shipped a bad game, <laughs> yeah, like, a game broken. So one of the bugs that one of my friends has, he's just recently started Far Cry Three. In fact, he's one of the friends that I was staying at uh, on my visit to Pune. So he's somehow managed to play and save a game of Far Cry Three on the first of January, seventeen years before he was born, and he's like twenty-seven. <laughs> So this is how you play is working at the moment. No, oh, wow. <laughs> no, I have no clue what happened. <laughs> I have I mean, no clue like, what happened. 
Yeah, Ubi, Uplay does have this weird thing like Ubisoft, one of the fixes that they have was for Assassin's Creed Unity was to delete all your in-game friends in Assassin's Creed to fix the crashes. Like, yeah. <laughs> so okay. there goes your like much wanted four player co-op. Like, too bad. Nice. So, yeah. Yeah, I don't know, man. Yeah, modern games, they're so much fun. There are, they are. They are a lot of fun. Yeah. But it's just, there's a lot of bullshit that comes with a new game these days that just, why? <coughs> Whatever. Yeah. It's been an interesting week. We will talk to each other next week, I guess. Uh, right? Unless there's something anyone else wants to bring up. Mm, no, I really. think I'm good, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, nothing on NASCOM? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah NASCOM. conference, yeah. Conference was good, yeah. The we best games won the awards, fun. obviously. Like, yes, we even clicked some derpy picks together. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Arvind won, like, Arvind got a big check, man. He was like... Oh yes, I was running around with it. <laughs> His ego has been inflated 20 times. <laughs> Don't know what it was already. God help us all. <laughs> yeah. It was bad. yeah, like especially when he was giving his talks, like yeah, whatever. I know everything. <laughs> yeah, but that is true though. So. Oh okay. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it was fun. Uh, I would say uh, the the art talks that I attended, out of which I like to talk by the uh, by. Uh, <coughs> the ogre head guys uh, who were making this game called Asura. Hmm. I liked that. Uh, I liked his talk a lot. What did he talk about in it? Uh, he just basically uh, talked about how he made uh, the artwork for the game and it was mostly kind of like, you know, 3D. He was talking about 3D stuff as well. So, he mostly he talked about the artwork for the game. That's it. Okay. Uh, so, any, like, in particular, like, like techniques or something that like you wanna you thought were pretty cool in that talk um not really i mean nothing as such but i just liked how he you know presented everything and how he talked about how i mean how he's worked on um, it was basic character art stuff that you know most character artists should know about okay so that's the whole problem right so um i didn't uh most of the talks that i attended were <laughs> pretty basic and they were mostly aimed for people who are new to the art, the art field you know they were just covering topics that any newbie it's for the newbie basically okay so, yeah no, that's a that was a theme this year i found like almost a la- large number of the talks were entry level talks to explain hmm. very basic concepts to people and i think that was because the number of students at this year's conference was higher than normal to say the least yeah, but I don't know. Uh, I actually did not attend uh, Rahul Phillips' session, which was concept art. Uh, to which was he was basically explaining his flow from concept art to making artwork, uh, which is like you know polished and everything. So that was one topic I missed, and I really regret doing that. But um, apart from that, I don't know. I mean, I feel they should add some intermediate stuff as well. Pata nahi. Maybe it's me. Maybe, I, I mean, I know you were right in that case. But last year as well, you know, Shiraj cu- uh, covered up a lot of topics, which again, this year again, people covered up those topics as well. So I don't understand what was the difference. Why would I again attend those talks? Okay. Hmm. Yeah, I think they need to start uh, upping their game a little bit in terms of what they get people to talk about. Especially in terms of art, I definitely think that Artists based out of India, considering we do a lot of outsourcing work, can mm. give slightly more sophisticated talks than basic entry level stuff. Uh, <laughs> because it's a fairly complicated, like what they do is not simple here. It's not just uh, deliver because something. Because I've heard this, this, okay, so they mostly give a talk on how they build characters. That's the easiest talk to give on, right? And I heard I've heard this talk so many times. I mean, I'm a character artist. Obviously, I've read upon that, so I know what all points he's mentioning. I take care of those points as well. But 
I mean, I understand that he was uh, that it's mostly for entry level, but I don't know. I need some something more now. I'm not entry level. I need something more. Hmm. Yeah, I guess uh, like the the trouble with the like uh, you know industry in, in the shape as ours is that we just have a need a lot of entry people, entry yeah. level people. So the few people who stick around long enough to become like you know senior level, mm. that like th- there's no f- like sort of financial sense in catering to them. So mm. it's just a uh... and like a lot of the people like. Uh, we're only there for the business kind of stuff, you know, uh, like the business track, my God, oh. like, yeah, like I, I was in that panel where the VCs were stuff and like this one game like called like Teen Patti or something, which like the guy who funded it basically twice was like, no, it's not a gambling game. You can't call it a gambling game. But like okay. everyone in the audience was like, how are you looking for like real money gambling, etc. So yeah, it is kind of weird, like. <laughs> what? <laughs> Teen yeah. Patti is a gambling game, right? Yeah, like they made an app for this. Like you can look it up. Actually, it's like one of the top apps on the like Android store in India. Huh, yeah, I've yeah. Been, I've been yeah. seeing a lot of advertisement about it actually. Yeah. I don't know if it's real money gambling, but it's definitely like it's it's close to that from what I've seen. Yeah, I mean it's a it's just strange. Uh, I don't know. Like overall, I found the talks very. More for the most part, I found them very, very bit toast, very, very basic stuff, which mm. had very little ambition to it, which is mm. fine, I guess. You know, it, it's just good to see everybody and to see that you're not the lone lunatic in the asylum. Uh, but then, yeah, it's fun to like, you know, check out uh, the BYOG what, stuff. That yeah, yeah, there's that. And there were, there were a lot of good games too. Like we're, sound, we're sounding really down. Like there were, there was mm. Social Falls, there was Asura. Like yeah. Rashi said, there was uh-huh. Dynet still, and there are games right. coming out. Like we met Dhruv, who's working on somewhere, which looks beautiful. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, uh, Arvind is kickstarting his new game. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's so a did you st- did you guys manage to play any of the games the school students designed? I took a look at some of them, and I played one of them. I played the first one. It's the puzzle game in which you move two boxes. Uh-huh. I don't remember. That was the BYOG thing, right? Uh, yes. Amal- amalgamate. Amal- amalgamate, yes. Correct. No, I'm talking about the school children who were there, you know? Oh, no, I didn't play any of those. Were any of those good? No, I, I played them. Good. Like, I was, like, judging them. So, the yeah. amalgamate was good. And then there was this other, what was this? The plant game, obviously. Verdant. Verdant. Yeah, Verdant, yeah. But, but Arvin, I those hmm. were the BYOG uh, submissions, right? Oh, oh yeah, the other row. Yeah, mm-hmm. I don't remember. Like, there was this one basketball game which was, like, made by school kids. Mm-hmm. That was kind of cool. Like, not very advanced, but, like, it's a school kid. Like, at that point, yeah, if I you're know. making anything, you're good. <laughs> yeah, I guess. But, huh, speaking of those, um, those two games were pretty good. Amalgamate and uh, Verdant. Mm. Verdant. I, what about Sag- Sagittarius? Did you pl- play that game? It was fr- uh, in the Oculus Rift. No, no, I didn't I get a chance to play that because, like, like there was a lot of crowd around it always. Yeah, yeah. My friend managed to play because she was cosplaying, so she somehow, you know, showed her portal guns, and everybody's like, "Okay, fine, go ahead." <laughs> so, I did not. Uh, she she found it was pretty good. I don't know. Okay. What is it? What is Sagittarius? Uh, I don't know. What I saw was this guy riding a chariot and he's shooting at uh, all the people chasing him because he has to escape this prison or <laughs> to escape the dungeon or something so you just have to shoot at people who are sort of chasing you and trying to <laughs> jump on the chariot and stop it and you know like grab you back and put you back into the prison so I think that's what it is about okay sounds interesting I wish I could check it out but it was like it was always crowded I never found a moment where it was empty uh, the only time it was empty was when those guys were actually packing it up. <laughs> yeah. Overall, it was it was an okay conference. The only thing I was actually irritated about was the fact that whenever I went for a cup of coffee, they were like, no ma'am, sorry, it's closed. <laughs> <laughs> that was like really irritating. 
Yeah. They need to up their coffee game if they want to be like Yes. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, they uh, yeah, like coffee is just I imagine they were just too swamped. Uh But yeah, overall like the location was nice. So I loved the conference. Uh Yeah, I had a good time. Yeah. It is good to know that there are other people making games on PC from yeah. India. And every just... time I go, like there are like four or five new faces who are like, "Yes, I don't want to make this free-to-play crap." So that's mm. good. Yeah, and there's even in mobile, there are people now who are coming out who are like, "I'm committed to making a quality experience on mobile," which is mm. yeah, heartening to hear. You know, uh, it's yeah, you don't get to hear that <laughs> often. Like people are at least trying to make good stuff mm. now. Mm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I guess it won't matter until someone makes a billion dollars making good games. I think after that everyone might turn, turn around and go, "Oh, someone made money doing doing <laughs> the right thing. Let's let's start listening to them now." <laughs> no, but that's actually going to be more and more tough even in like PC yeah. stuff. Like the yeah. games that are like making money now are the like you know, in-game economy, free to play, like mm. it's just like well, a reality, you know, I guess. There's that, but I'll, there's also shit like Five Nights at Freddy movie. that that there's no in game economy there that is just like a viral hit that caught up god knows how it just did really really well no yeah but that's uh, obviously like uh, you can't predict that and like it was got- the, the 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 time period of its viral viralness was very short like there's a reason five nights in freddy's 2 is like already out yeah in just a month because the the guy is new that uh, like and it was like on like 75% sale the, the original one immediately so it's just like a it's a, it's sort of a flash in a pan kind of thing you know you, so, suddenly every youtuber was playing it because of the jump scares kind of thing mm. yeah i think there's there is that kind of thing there with that for sure but i i also think that like i don't think that yeah you're right <coughs> like games that make the most money these days are the open world that kind of thing the, the early access game that promises people the world but there's something to be said for the interesting experience that you know is just relying on making something cool and hoping people are willing to pay money for that up front i don't think that's going anywhere anytime soon i just think that like i don't know i think we were discussing this earlier today But I think the marketplace is going to bifurcate, and that Steam is going to become more and more. Steam is going to start moving towards becoming like a multiplayer storefront where people come to Steam to play their multiplayer games. And I think people will start moving towards GOG for the more curated single-player experiences. You know, uh, like that's what I see happening in the future. We should end it here. It's one o'clock now. Yes, I actually yeah, okay. kind of dozed uh-huh. off. I think. Uh-huh. <laughs> Mm, this is it for today's podcast, and with me, uh, Vivek. Hey, bye, guys. And Arvind. Bye. See you later.